Okay, welcome once again. Uh, this uh, is going to be a great time of uh, reconnecting. I know it's been a while uh, since we've had the mentoring hour. This is the first mentoring hour of uh, this semester. Uh, so we'd like to begin with a word of prayer. I want to request anyone on the call to please lead us uh, in a time of prayer, and then we will get started. OK, Avni, uh, would you be able to lead us? Good morning, ma'am. Yes, yeah, sure. Good morning. Father God, we are so thankful to you for this beautiful morning. We are so thankful to you for bringing us back again to this time, Lord Father. When we all together, Father, to learn about you more. And Lord, as we surrender ourselves, as we surrender this mentoring, our Father, we ask you to come and take over our Father and help us to all go deeper into your word, understand things in the right context and right perspective. And Father, glorify your name through everything that we learn about, Father. Help each of us, anoint each of us. Bless each of us, Father, so that we can glorify you through our lives as we apply the word, as we learn the word, as we grow with each other and be equipped for your ministry in the way you want us to be, Father. Let all the distractions go, Father. Let all things be done according to thine will. And let your name be glorified through each of our lives. We bless once again everyone, all our teachers, all the students, Father. Let all things be done according to your will. We give you glory, honor, and praise because you deserve all the glory, honor, and praise. And ask this prayer in the precious and matchless name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Avni. Thank you so much for uh, leading us in prayer. So for those of us who may be new on the call for the semester, just to um, explain to us what this call is all about, uh, it's a time when we have students as well as uh, faculty uh, connecting on the same call. Uh, and any form of questions, questions pertaining to Christian life, questions pertaining to Christian ministry, or maybe there are questions that we may have, um, you know, that have been discussed in class or we've, uh, we've picked it up uh, elsewhere, but we want to clarify, we want to find answers to those questions. So this is a, a great time when we can bring up those questions. And uh, our faculty is here, each one, uh, you know, deal uh, with different streams uh, here at uh, uh, the Bible College. So you know, they'll be able to uh, answer, you know, if, if not all, uh, most of the questions, we do our best to, you know, give us uh, the answers. So. Uh, we can get started. If there are any questions that you know you would like to uh, bring up, then please do. You could either post it on the chat or you could uh, just unmute your mic and uh, ask, please. So I'll leave this time open to uh, questions that you may have. Apart from questions, we um, can also share our learning. Uh, so what we can do while we wait for uh, questions on this call is we could, you know, all just share our learning. It's been a while, you know, between the two semesters. So if there's anything new you've learned, uh, you could please share it with the rest of the group. Students are welcome to do that, faculty as well. So please feel free, you can share your learning. Okay, uh, so just for us to get things moving here, um, you know, I think I'll ask a, a different ones of us. Uh, whatever learning you've had, 
uh, please feel free to to share that one so maybe we can uh, begin with john uh, john would you like to share with us i was just typing a question that's okay I'll oh <laughs> okay you already have a question okay okay uh, okay so if you have a qu question then maybe I'll, we can I'll, begin I'll, with uh, the question yeah. is, is it okay yeah that's fine that's fine yeah um but at apc we don't keep it as a requirement to be water baptized to take part of the lord's table um so if uh, when people ask certain questions maybe some of them come from different church background uh if some of them ask uh, why do you allow that um do we have a scripture evidence or uh, uh, can we share from the bible uh, why it is uh, uh, you know it is not a requirement requirement uh, although we know the importance of water baptism how do we uh, put it forward to them okay thank you john uh, for that question so uh, what john wants to know is um, even though we are aware that water baptism is not uh, uh, sorry come again john communion for communion yeah, to take part of the communion yes uh, water baptism baptism is a requirement Uh, so some people ask okay. oh, isn't it uh, isn't it required so um at apc we we don't keep it as a requirement or or mm -hmm. law uh, to be water baptized to take part of the lord's mm -hmm. table so how do we communicate that to them uh, okay sure sure thank you thank you john so uh, here at apc we we don't say that water baptism is a requirement for communion how do we um, uh, clarify this to people who may have questions so i want to leave this uh, question open for any of our faculty to please pick it up um yeah yeah i know i just like to share a bit um yes, so please. um we can begin by Uh, yeah, we can begin by uh, John. So we can begin by sharing what it represents. You know the sacraments of the New Testament Church. We have uh, uh, two. That is uh, the Lord's Table. What uh, I mean, communion, and uh, uh, what a baptism. So these are the two sacraments that we have. Um, so we can begin by sharing what it represents. You know that it's a proclamation uh, of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord, and. Uh, Uh, how we identify with it every time we do it we you know we proclaim that so that is that is what it is now what qualifies us uh, for each of these sacraments is that we receive him as lord and savior that's the only thing right uh, like in the book of acts when it comes to water baptism philip if you if you you know right right from chapter 2 we see um, uh, you know um, um, peter talking about it and then we see uh, philip talking to the ethiopian eunuch about water baptism well the only thing that we see is that uh, for each of these that uh, a person has received christ a person has invited jesus and uh, believed in jesus and is a follower of the lord that's the only requirement so that, which is why um, in uh, church also before Uh, communion before uh, ministering in uh, communion we say you know if you are a follower of the lord jesus if you have received the lord jesus your lord and savior you know yeah, you are, you are welcome to take part so that is the only or you know we can even lead people in prayer and so we don't see anywhere in scripture that one has to be water baptized in order to take part uh, become so first thing you know we can share what it represents and uh, we can also share that the qualifier is that a person receives jesus as their lord and savior a person is born again in order to do this and uh, and that uh, i think um, that would be helpful for that person um yeah A anyone else can add on to it please thank you Thank you, thank you, Pastor Jay Kumar. Uh, if there are any 
more insights that other faculty would like to add to this? Yeah, Pastor Selina, you want to share something? I think that is uh, in scripture, there is no explicit instruction in scripture that, you know, uh, one must be water baptized before uh, partaking in the Lord's table. So that is why, you know, at All People's Church, we keep the participation in the Lord's table open to all who are born again uh, believers. And also, again, there is no explicit age restriction uh, in scripture um, on when a person should be baptized in a water. Like uh, Pastor Jake said, that the only requirement is that a person has to be born again uh, to their personal faith in uh, Jesus Christ. And, you know, um, uh, like he said, uh, you know, when we, are, uh, when we uh, are baptized in water, we are actually, uh, you know, partaking in the death, the burial, uh, the resurrection, the uh, ascension uh, of Jesus Christ. And uh, the same way when we partake in the, uh, the Lord's table, we are... Uh, we're actually partaking in what the Lord has done for us on the cross and, you know, uh, that we can receive the full blessings of uh, what he has done on the cross for our lives. So uh, since there is no explicit instruction in scripture, we can't say that one has to be, uh, you know, water baptized to take part in the Lord's table. It's the same as, uh, you know, for uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, that we, we can't say that one has to uh, be baptized in water and then receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We see this in Acts chapter uh, uh, 10 when, you know, uh, Paul goes and uh, ministers in Cornelius' house. You know, uh, before even he gave the altar call, the people were cut to their heart and, uh, you know, they started speaking in tongues and then they were water, water baptized. Same with, uh, uh, with Saul after his encounter, you know, before he was water baptized, he, um, uh, you know, when Ananias uh, 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 laid hands on him and prayed, uh, you know, he uh, received um, uh, uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit and then he was uh, water baptized. So, uh, there we can say that, you know, we have specific uh, 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 yeah, narratives or incidents in the Bible, but there is nothing that explicitly says that we need to be water baptized. So, uh, and I think in both of these things, the requirement is that, you know, one has to uh, put their personal faith in Jesus Christ, be born again believers so that they can uh, partake in both. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, John, for your question. Nice yeah. good question. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Selena. Uh, I want to ask John if uh, this is all right or if you have any follow-up questions. Um, yes, Pastor. Yes. Um, and follow-up question. I had one regarding to the serving of communion. Um, I, so go ahead go ahead john should the people uh, yeah so the people who uh, help us in serving the communion the ushers um so do we look for people who are baptized or at least you know who are taking part of the communion already or um and because we have students uh and all coming here for the church and most of them are very willing to serve in any area so especially at this part should be uh keep an eye on uh, who uh, who we choose to serve the community. Okay, nice question, John. So who do we choose among volunteers to serve the communion? Our pastors, uh, would you have any inputs? Uh, just to add one more sentence to that, because in, in Acts, we also see that um, you know, uh, people with full of spirit and wisdom are uh, chosen to serve the uh, <laughs> serve the food ministry, right? So, I'm just wondering if uh, that applies uh, even now. Okay, thank you, thank you, John. So, uh, Pastor Paul. Would you be able to uh, share yes. some 
I, I'll just share my thoughts. Uh, this is my thoughts, right? Uh, uh, I feel that uh, for uh, in in terms of serving the Lord's table in communion, it's just a volunteering thing that, uh, and it's a practical need. So we need volunteers to serve. Uh, so there's nothing wrong to have those who are, you know, not water baptized or not. Uh, uh, taking part in the Lord's table, they if they are willing to serve, definitely we give them an opportunity and let them serve. Uh, and it, it's a good thing in one way because they may ask questions. So they may say, uh, you know, they may come up to you and ask, like, what is all this? What is it about? What is, uh, you know? Uh, so it opens up for discussion, opens up uh, you know, for questions, and and so I feel that practically. Uh, they want to serve God, and they feel that ushering is something that they would like to do. So, uh, give them an opportunity. We don't stop them from serving God. Uh, so, practically, I feel it's all right. So, they don't have to be, you know, water baptized, or they don't have to be people who are partaking in the Lord's table, and only then they can serve, uh, you know, uh, in the communion. So, that's what I personally feel. Uh, and so in the book of Acts, when uh, John, you mentioned that, you know, uh, the choosing of the seven in Acts, seven, uh, Acts chapter seven, uh, who, you know, uh, sorry, Acts six. Um, and it says there, yes, uh, they, were, they were full of wisdom. And, uh, uh, but I, I believe that, you know, uh, even, even now, even as we like, you know, choose people, uh, uh, we look at their heart, their desire to serve, and uh, wisdom is something that comes over time as well. Uh, and so I, I feel that you know we give them time, give them, give people uh, the time to grow, and, uh, and this wisdom and power is not something that comes overnight. So even as we give them opportunities to volunteer, serve. Uh, and in whatever they're doing, I'm sure that the Lord will grant them the wisdom, and uh, and we as leaders can, you know, always be there to help them uh, to grow in their calling. So uh, I hope that you know uh, brings a little bit of clarity. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Paul, for sharing your view. Uh, uh, any of the other pastors, would you also like to share your? Uh, insights, please. Oh, good question, John. Uh, 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 if I just looking at uh, what Paul writes in First Corinthians chapter eleven, there we see that uh, you know the Lord's table was celebrated more like a feast where they used to bring uh, you know their own food and bread, and uh, and then we had two groups, you know, one the rich and one the poor, and uh, you know, and then he's addressing the whole issue of, uh, uh, you know, behavior there, addressing the behavior of people at uh, the Corinthian church. And, you know, um, they were partaking of the Lord's table uh, in not a worthy manner. And so he addresses that. Um, and he says, you know, we must prepare our hearts, examining our lives and renouncing sin and uh, taking the elements, understanding and believing what they uh, represent, that it represents the, the death and the shed blood of Jesus on the cross. Um, so there we see it was like, you know, they just distributing uh, uh, the elements or whatever they bought. It was more like a feast, but uh, he was talking more to them about their behavior and the significance of doing what they were doing. So uh, I think this whole uh, ritual of us, you know, passing it out and the sun is to just for convenience sake and it was I think uh, done the same way I think you know I'm not too sure but I think reading from scripture that this is what they did in the uh, early churches um, as well so uh, and they were all just you know uh, growing uh, believers but we know the church at Corinth they were uh, very zealous in their faith and you know they were flowing mightily in the gifts uh, so yeah, like uh, Pastor Paul said, just, uh, you know, it will also give an opportunity for those who are serving to, we can train them, you know, to examine their lives, to, uh, uh, you know, uh, to uh, uh, 
renounce any sin and also would help them to grow in their walk with God and personal holiness. Uh, we also don't know, you know, those who are partaking uh, in the Lord's table, they might be see seated, they might not be necessarily serving, but, uh, you know, we're all, uh, you know, we all um, uh, are sinful people. We indulge in, uh, we have uh, our own weaknesses. So none of us are perfect and God knows that. And so it's also a good opportunity for people who are serving to grow in the things of God, to grow uh, in personal holiness and intimacy with God. And uh, just seeing from the early church, you know, this is what they did. So, you know, uh, and Paul does not address that, but uh, just helps them to see, uh, help them to take part in a worthy manner, all of them together. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor Selena. Thank you, Pastor Paul, for sharing your views. I just thought I'd uh, add my two uh, cents. Um, as we look at Acts chapter 6, you know, we see that even the men who were chosen as volunteers uh, were um, like there was a requirement you know, that they must be full of the Holy Spirit wisdom, have good rep, rep, uh, testimony. Uh, so this is the ideal scenario, uh, John. So th the task which was given to uh, the seven volunteers was not more of an administrative task, but there was still a spiritual requirement uh, uh, from them. Now, when we look at um, uh, works, in the house of God, uh, which are spiritual in nature, you know, the, later on we will read when Paul writes to Timothy about who should be a bishop, who should be, or in other words, other words, what qualifies uh, uh, an individual to be a pastor? That is uh, that is raising the bar to a whole new level. But as it is, I think, even for the administrative task in Acts chapter 6, um, there is a requirement, spiritual requirement, as well as, uh, uh, you know, their skills and all of those uh, things are concerned. So this is the ideal. Uh, but then when it comes to uh, practicality, let's say there is a church a small church a growing church and you don't have uh, volunteers at all and as uh, pastor paul pointed out and pastor Selena pointed out when there are people i think it's okay to prayerfully decide who can be um, in various uh, tasks and uh, a pastor can decide and of course it's understandable why you would ask that question because sometimes certain um, roles uh, let's say somebody's leading from the front so when people observe you know, there is a test they think of their testimony and all that comes to uh, a growing believer's mind so if you feel that okay those who are uh, serving communion or even administrative tasks but somewhat in the forefront uh, should should be a you know somewhat mature in christ that's all, that's all right uh, but in a growing church when you don't even have people of that caliber uh i think it's okay if you have like sincere believers who are seeking god who love god um, and they are growing uh, i think it's okay if we we hand them the responsibility of uh, maybe even serving communion so uh, my opinion there and uh, uh, anything else john or are you okay with that answer yes was yeah thank you thank you thank you everyone for sharing Helpful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, all right. We'll uh, proceed. Uh, if there are any more questions, other questions, comments, please feel free. You can share. So while we wait for uh, questions, if okay, Avni, I see you unmuted your mic. Yes, ma'am. So I was just you have something listening to, to the answers. That, uh, yes, ma'am. Can you hear uh -huh. me? I'm, uh, yes, yes sir. So I was just uh, pondering on the answers given to uh, Brother John Paul uh, regarding uh, the requirements. So, uh, you know, coming from a mainline church, 
uh, we do not see any of these requirements being asserted or being followed up in those churches by the people who are taking sacraments as well as water baptism is nowhere in the scene uh, there there's infant baptism and then there's a confirmation ceremony where there is no requirement of being born again and uh, they do not have any such concept in their minds so when they are partaking of it is it uh, something uh, you know I, I don't know how to put up the question, but is it the right thing to do or uh, is it okay for them to do like that? Or, uh, you know, how do we understand that part of uh, following up uh, uh, the process in the church? So what should be understood out of that? Like, is it right thing or they should be uh, alerted or told about it? Okay, so Agni, uh, just want to understand your question. Uh, are you asking that? Are you asking if it is okay to uh, partake of the communion if you're not baptized? Mm -hmm. or are, is it okay to serve? Yeah. No, 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 not serving. It's like taking the communion. Uh, because Com there, neither okay. there, is, uh, there is a testimony of being born again nor there is a testimony of water baptism but they uh, come to a certain age and they make a, parents make a decision that now they are willing and ready to take the holy communion so the children just go and take a one month class or maybe sometimes one sunday class and they start the holy communion so why i'm asking this is because if you read 1 corinthians 11 it is written there like it is uh, important for us to take the partake of the table in a worthy manner. So uh, uh, my question is doing that, uh, is it something that uh, comes under that kind of category where we are partaking it, not exactly believing and knowing it, but because it is a tradition, and they uh, start taking it and without making a decision to follow Christ or is receive Christ, they just uh, sometimes, you know, I, I had taken that in my age when I had just given a small exam or a um, thing and from the Bible they had like 10 questions. I passed the questions after and then I was given the, my first Holy Communion, but I had no uh, understanding of it neither i had any experience of being born again so this is happening till date it is the same so uh, does it come into the category of partaking it in an unworthy manner or without discerning the body they are taking it so i want to understand is that uh, the right thing to do and if not then what is uh, the implication of it in your uh, spiritual life or uh, that's what my question is. I hope I'm clear, ma'am. Yes, 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 Amni. Thank you. So what you're pointing out is uh, in uh, some churches, uh, as a tradition, as a ritual, when you are a certain age or if you are able to answer <clears throat> some questions, they uh, qualify you for communion. Now, that person may or may not be born again. Is it OK to? Uh, let them have communion if they're not born again and they have communion what are the implications of that right okay so right. Uh, yeah sure so uh, the question is open to our pastors uh, would appreciate it if someone uh, could throw some light on this yeah i just wanted to share that uh, i also went through the same path that avni was uh, mentioning you know uh, infant ba infant baptism confirmation uh, etc and uh, after confirmation taking part in the communion uh, uh, but uh, with no knowledge of salvation or experience of salvation so a lot of things um, are done in ignorance um, and uh, uh, so I, I was just thinking about um, you know one Corinthians eleven where Paul refers uh, uh, you know lays down that whole thing about uh, how to do it in an uh, how to do it in a worthy manner and what is unworthy manner etc. So he's addressing a body of believers who have uh, you know experienced Christ. They are carnal. There's there are divisions. There's strife. Everything. But uh, he's at, uh, at definitely addressing a body of believers who've come to the saving knowledge of Christ. And then he's saying, you know, you you um, since they know the truth, 
he's talking to them and this is one of the things that he's addressing just like you know uh, food offered to idols and everything um so um so we can say that you know having come to know the truth um, and if you're you know not really discerning the lord's body and you're doing it as a as a ritual, then it would definitely amount to uh, not discerning the Lord's body and then uh, eating in an unworthy manner and, and the consequence of it follows, of course. Um, but to do it out of ignorance, um, well, uh, uh, the, the Lord would certainly lead them to the, to the light as he's working on you know, uh, all others, that he'll, he'll definitely provide opportunities for them to know the truth, uh, provide uh, orchestrate things for them to come to the come to know the truth about it. Uh, he'd definitely do that. So uh, my opinion is this, that um, it, it's not the same thing. You know, when you do it out of ignorance, when you do it, when you, uh, with the knowledge of, and the understanding, and then uh, having experienced Christ, um, you know, you, being carnal and doing it so um i think there's a difference um so yeah i would just um, share that thank you pastor now uh, avni is that okay yes so now i'm just thinking they have the word with them they are reading the bible they are being you know taught the bible in the church so they themselves read from the scriptures like uh, the requirements for the this so will they still be uh, considered ignorant that's my question uh, is it okay if i can add something yeah, yeah. yes please go so, ahead uh, so yes, Avni. So uh, I totally agree with boss, what Pastor Jakes was saying, right? If it's done in ignorance. Now, if you look at, um, I'm just reminded of this, and you know, you know, in the Old Testament when God, you know, instituted all of these laws and sacrifices and all of it. Um, but eventually, over the years uh, after Malachi, there was like 400 years of you know uh, silence and 400 years of no prophetic word, and it's you know it just became a ritual right so people kept doing those offerings and sacrifices just because their forefathers did it um and most of them didn't really know why they were doing it right and isaiah says also isaiah says you know you honor me you 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 honor me with your lips but your far, hearts are far away so so uh, uh, so the same thing like even if we look now maybe there are many of them uh, who are just doing certain things because because their parents have told them to do it, uh, and even like even for me uh, coming from mainline church, it was just like okay, you have to you know have be confirmed in the church and all of that. But I didn't really understand it. I I didn't try to understand it as well. So, but then uh, we see that in in the book of when the Lord Jesus came, and then in the book of Acts, we see that the same people who were living that kind of religious life and following these rituals not understanding anything uh but just doing things out of you know uh, just as a ritual but we see that their hearts were changed and then god was able to change their hearts so if we look at the bigger picture yeah they they you know a lot of people may be you know partaking in the lord's table or or, or doing things in church um out of just okay because people have told me to do it i'm doing it but um like what pastor jakes ended by saying that god is able to speak into their hearts so uh, the same way how he did in the book of acts where you know, a lot of them were jews and gentiles and i'm sure the jews were all partaking in all of those rituals and offerings and sacrifice but when uh, you know the gospel was preached at that time the message of the cross it just penetrated and their lives were changed so they were willing to give up everything um so basically what i'm trying to get at is that um, um god can break through all of those religious uh things that we try to follow they do have the word uh but it's important but you know it, it's important to put context to the word and ask the holy spirit for uh, you know divine revelation and and god can do that so uh so we continue to trust god and i'm sure there are many of them in the mainline church who desire to like you know know more of the word uh, 
and they need good teachers and good uh, you know uh, learning good teaching and to understand the word so uh, so I, I'll just leave it at that uh, I believe that you know God can penetrate their hearts and uh, if they're doing it out of ignorance uh, it's not going to affect them much because they don't really know what what it is but if they if they know it and then um, you know do it just just so that uh, you know uh, uh, out of convenience or anything else then it could have repercussions but uh, out of ignorance it, it will not affect is what i would say thank you thank you okay thank you pastor paul and i see avni's uh, comment she says yes amen thank you pastors um so i think uh, you know you're okay with the answer uh, avni we'll uh, yes, move forward yeah uh, we'll move forward if there are any other questions okay uh, yes sister rupa uh, i see you uh, raising your hand please go ahead sister good morning to all i just wanted to add uh, to avni's uh, question uh, i felt that knowing the truth when we are enlightened and see the people who are still in darkness and not able to understand even in christianity i think it is our uh, responsibility to plead on their behalf when we pray that would make a great difference and god will work out in their lives that's how uh, god works wants to work and use us as channels so that his revelation is manifested in their lives and they would come closer to god i felt that just wanted to share ma'am thank you thank you so much for sharing definitely you know when people are in ignorance um we need to continue to pray for them and we know that you know god will um enlighten them even those who who may know and who are on the wrong track we need to pray okay uh let's uh, uh you know move uh, further ahead if there are questions pertaining to any other subject uh please feel free you can ask so maybe at this point john do you want to come in and share any of your learnings the last couple of months and then you know others can follow john um hi everyone um so second year uh, i mean second year now second year is a uh, li little more uh, as expected a little more uh, in depth than uh, first year got a lot of learning um um uh so uh, especially uh, we have this topic of marriage and uh, family it's uh, really eye opener in many areas even though we have gone through that course but still uh, when we go back and uh, learn from the, the those uh, concepts again it's uh, really insightful and a lo lot of things to be practically applicable in daily life um it's a good uh, reminder in many areas um um having said that all, all subjects are important i'm just pointing out because it's really ministering to me um, personally these days um and also uh it's quite interesting to uh, so we have this uh, homiletics also uh, where we uh, talk about biblical preaching for subjects is teaching that um so um when we have this assignments is quite uh, you know uh, helpful to um uh, rather than first year uh, um, where we had assessment towards the end of a month or so um and we have an ongoing thing like when um let's say you start with a topic and you finish that topic throughout like one or two weeks it's it's quite helpful to um just to 
uh, be in that area, be in that topic, and understand more, and um, you know, able to study more, uh, which is really, really helpful. Yeah, thank you for that. Yes, thank you, thank you, John. Yeah, it's really uh, you know nice to hear what what has been uh, touching your heart and you know making an impact for you, and uh, all the new things that you're picking up in the second year. So that's a blessing. I uh, want to continue asking uh, students as well as faculty to uh, please share from your own lives any learnings. Maybe I'll ask uh, Sister Rupa, uh, now that you're in the third year, uh, is there anything, Sister, that you feel, you know, it's new, different, Thank you, ma'am. Third year, I tell you the truth, really enjoying the learning and uh, learning so many new things which uh, we have left out. Going through the same scriptures, but at the same time, God is uh, blessing us with new, me, especially with new insights and, and learning the heart of God and it's a, really a blessing. Thank you, ma'am, for asking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarupa. Great to hear that. Uh, new insights, new learnings. Uh, Avni, would you also like to share? Sure, ma'am. So for me, this year, I, I mean, it has been a great journey. Last two years, we've learned so much. And in every area, most important thing is that it has broadened my perspective towards people. I've understood that, you know, uh, the end of everything is like being faithful to Christ. You can be from any place, any denomination, any, you know, uh, thing. But ultimately, it is about Jesus being built up in us and through us that is something which has broadened my perspective towards you know um, looking at people uh, who are part of the body of christ and secondly i was very afraid of the administrative part which you know i always thought it's not like something that i can but learning about church and ministry administration this year i'm enjoying that class and uh, the kind of detailing being taught like how uh, one should uh, you know think about uh, beginning a church and what things to be taken care of you know being equipped with that is something very very essential as well as very interesting and very needed because many churches they start and they close and you know people look at them and they feel like uh, they couldn't manage through but um, it is such a beautiful course where we are learning church planting and ministry administration and uh, learning how to uh, you know plan it out in such a way because bible says count the cost before you so we have to plan it out in such a way so learning that has uh, you know uh, i has broken my stronghold where i felt i could never you know ever be able to do that because uh, but yes now i feel excited about uh, the calling god has given and uh, being equipped to learn how to manage it is a real blessing and online course having everything like we can go back to the lectures we can go back to the videos and you know get get information back if you've missed out something being at home sometimes you know we are in the classroom but we are not exactly <laughs> sometimes we are occupied with things but then thankfully we have the videos around and we can go back and listen to them and you know reaffirm things and revise things so that is such a blessing so i thank god for all the things that we have been learning every every subject you know is been a blessing uh, and they're very beautifully designed in such a way that uh, more than everything else we are being blessed and built up uh, for the ministry as well as as a uh, as a believer in christ so thank you so much i take this opportunity to thank everyone uh, for teaching us with so much love patience and uh, uh, depth. So I, I thank you all. Thank you for sharing, Avni. And so it, 
encouraging you know to uh, see that your perspective is changing with all that you're learning um so uh, we have about 5 minutes left if there are if there is another question you know we can accommodate that uh, if not i think we will pray and wrap up the session for today the time is still open in case you want to discuss regarding anything all right so uh we will have uh, this uh, mentoring hour on google uh, google classroom uh, once a month every wednesday so every wednesday 8 a.m to 8 50 a.m uh, indian time and uh, just want to encourage uh, um, those of us who have joined to please continue to join every month uh, and also if you could let your classmates know it will be nice to have uh, more students connecting on the mentoring hour and for us to explore uh, you know different uh, different aspects uh, of what we have been studying here at Bible College and even outside. So uh, let's close off for now. Uh, I want to request um, be one of the faculty to please pray, um, and then we we wrap up. Uh, Pastor Paul, could you please lead us in a word of prayer? Sure. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for this beautiful day, God. We thank you for, Lord, your word that is so powerful. We thank you for, Lord, the wisdom. I pray, God, that you will continue to anoint each one of us, fill us with your wisdom, with your understanding, oh God, even as we continue to learn from your word. And, uh, Lord, I pray that you will bring in clarity, you will bring in deeper revelations of your word, oh God. And I pray, God, that uh, your word will be sown in our hearts, oh God, to bear fruit in our lives, oh God. Father, we thank you. Um, as we uh, as we know, Lord, your word says that uh, uh, it is light unto our path, oh God. And I just pray for each one of us, the students, faculty, all of us, oh God, that we will continue to look to your word and, and walk in your ways, oh God. We ask, God, that you will, uh, Lord, we will stand on your word, oh God. We thank you for this beautiful time. And uh, I pray, God, that you will continue to teach us help us to learn and grow and fulfill every purpose that you have for us lord we we submit this time into your hands in jesus name we pray amen amen and thank you pastor paul thank you everyone for connecting on the call today god bless you have a blessed day